So just imagine this for a second. The Avengers movies and the Spy Kids movies come together and they create a secret love child. This film right here would be the end result. I mean, just looking at this film, that's just... It's so blatantly obvious. Welcome back to the channel once again, ladies and gentlemen, and yep, here we are, yet another brand new movie review, and as always, I thank you all so much for stopping by, and I hope you enjoy your stay. But this time around, we're hopping back onto Netflix to take a look at We Can Be Heroes. This one was directed by the one and only Robert Rodriguez, returning to the family-friendly realm. He's going back to the style of such films like the Spy Kids series and the adventures of Shark Boy and Lava Girl. When alien invaders kidnap Earth's mightiest group of superheroes, the hero's children must team up and learn to work together if they want to save their parents and the world. So just to start off, I gotta say something real quick about Robert Rodriguez, because I really respect the man a ton. In many ways, he is the quintessential filmmaker's filmmaker. He is a jack of all trades. He can do his own directing, his own cinematography. He can be super efficient that way, and just downright cool. And that shows in a lot of his past films. Sin City comes to mind. More recently, Recently, he just did the tragedy episode of this past season of The Mandalorian. But his children's films are... Mm, they're kind of hit and miss. Growing up, I was never the biggest fan of the Spy Kids films. I... I really don't know what it was, guys, but I just was never really enthralled by them. But for some reason, I really gravitated towards Shark Boy and Lava Girl back then. That may have been because the film really reminded me of how me and my older cousin were. Whenever we would play games or whatever, we would always get super creative with it and make our own characters. Or maybe I just like comic book films, both of which are true. And yeah, I realize that Shark Boy and Lava Girl isn't the best movie in the world, but... <laughs> I really don't know what it is. I just hold a lot of nostalgia with it. It's also just a stupidly fun time. And I would say We Can Be Heroes is something I hold in similar regard. And I gotta give them credit where credit is due. They actually used this film to improve on a lot of aspects that didn't work back in 2005. Which, let me just be clear about something from the offset, by the way. Even though this film is set in the same timeline as Shark Boy and Lava Girl, in my eyes, this movie is not a direct sequel. This is not about Shark Boy and Lava Girl all grown up. I mean, they're in the film, sure, but they're not the main focus. It's kind of like saying the original Avengers film is a direct sequel to the original Iron Man. Sure, those films are of course set in the same universe, but the first Avengers film is not all about Tony Stark. Let me just say also, for the seven to eight year old kid in me, it was really, really cool to see Shark Boy and Lava Girl again on screen. It was really cool to see Taylor Dooley back kicking ass as Lava Girl, but Shark Boy is wearing a mask this time around. It's a cool update on his design and all, but that mask was put on him for a reason. And yeah, this is clearly not Taylor Lautner. And that I actually kind of found distracting. And I realize how this all may be really disappointing to those of you guys who may be huge hardcore fans of Shark Boy and Lava Girl, which to be honest, I don't know how many of those there are. But look at the poster one more time. Do you guys see Shark Boy and Lava Girl on this? Because I don't. So, I mean, that should really tell you all you need to know about their involvement. But let's talk about what worked with We Can Be Heroes, because honestly, I found a lot that really, really clicked. The performances, I think, are one of the key facets as to why this movie was so fun. All the grown-ups in this, including Shark Boy and Lava Girl, really, really fun performances here. I mean, Christian Slater's in this. This is actually a pretty underratedly stacked cast. Priyanka Chopra is in this, doing her best impression of how silly George Lopez was as Mr. Electricidad. I don't know if she was more over the top than he was. That's a difficult one, actually. But she was super fun to watch because, honestly, it... <laughs> It really felt like she was having a blast with this part. And that in turn made me have fun as well. And Pedro Pascal, he has been a busy bee this year, hasn't he? He's just continuing to prove with this that he's one of the most versatile actors out there right now. Unlike Mando and unlike Maxwell Lord... This is a parent that also cares about his child, but he just wants to be a parent. He wants no part of this action stuff. He wants nothing to do with the heroics anymore, which is a complete 180 to his other two big roles he's had this year. He's almost like the Hawkeye of this group. He looks like Hawkeye, he dresses like Hawkeye, he kind of talks like Hawkeye, and he's good at it, sure. But that's kind of an issue I had with this film. I'm... 
you notice I'm making a lot of comparisons here. The parallels to the Avengers, I feel like, were way too obvious. Especially with that first act. Like, oh my gosh. It was like beat for beat the Battle of New York. Except the only difference being... Spoilers, the heroics lose. And that thankfully means that these parallels aren't there for very long. Because this film is more focused on their children and how they're learning to use their own powers. It's like a better version of Secret Society of Second Born Royals, which I also reviewed on this channel earlier this year. I honestly felt more of a genuine connection and team spirit with this group of kids. And to boot, these kids are throwing their freaking all into this. And that's maybe the biggest praise I can give this film. Not only the kids, in their performances, but also their superpowers. These are some of the most unique powers I've ever seen given to a group of heroes. I mean, you have a set of identical twins in this that are always at odds with each other because one can rewind through time and the other can fast forward. There's this tech-savvy kid played by Andy Walken with the biggest Professor X wheels I've ever seen in my life. There's an a cappella singer who can levitate objects to her advantage, which really made me happy as a theater kid. And... <laughs> Yeah, there's a kid in this also that instead of having super speed, I'm not kidding you, he moves in slow motion the whole time. And, I mean, you got me, Robert Rodriguez. That's just, it's f***ing hilarious. And Shark Boy and Lava Girl also have a daughter in this group named Guppy, and you got me again. She is f***ing adorable. But when she needs to kick somebody's ass... Let's just say she does it in spades. But not all of these powers are that unique. There's a kid named Wildcard in this group who's kind of the de facto leader who kind of gets any superpower he wants whenever he thinks of it. It's essentially just Project Power without the randomness. And there's a kid that's all stretchy like Reed Richards and... Yeah, his CGI looks kind of lame. And that's actually where my issues will start with this film. Even though most of this CGI is an improvement over Sharkboy and Lava Girl, it still doesn't look overly convincing a lot of the time. But here's the thing. At least with this film, Robert Rodriguez isn't blatantly showing us how cool these 3D effects are with this. But my biggest issue with this film is sadly the script. In my opinion, it's got some major, major issues. Uh, just to give you guys an example, without spoiling anything of course, there is a moment involving one of the kids and there's a plot twist with them and their good-bad affiliation and it could have easily been fixed because a couple of the kids already knew about this twist in the moment and yeah, they could have easily fixed everything right Right there. But it's weird because it just isn't fixed there and it's kept a secret from everybody else up until it's revealed to us. It's super, super strange. But it is much needed because this plot twist actually also turns out to be a red herring. And it's ultimately used to help reveal Robert Rodriguez's ultimate message with this. And before I praise this message in any way, one thing I feel like this script really, really got wrong is that it's really too on the nose. This is an issue that wasn't fixed from Sharkboy and Lava Girl, by the way. I feel like, especially in that denouement, everything is over-explained to us, rather than expressed to us, which is honestly the whole idea of film in a nutshell. But despite those small issues I have, I... I really didn't hate this movie. Even though it's pretty hokey in nature and the originality isn't all there, I think what the film really has going for it is that message I was just talking about. Even though he over explains it, essentially this film is all about how the next generation may be better equipped to deal with the world's problems now. I mean, it's a really cool message from a super cool director who did a really nice job with this film, but I just wish he expressed rather than explained in a few moments. With all that in mind though, I'm gonna give We Can Be Heroes a B minus. This movie obviously was not terrible by any stretch of the imagination. I do enjoy all these fun characters with some super interesting powers. And it was really, really cool seeing Sharkboy and Lava Girl again in a new film. But again, the CG isn't all that convincing. I mean, heck, if I were like seven or eight years old like I was when I first watched Sharkboy and Lava Girl, we Can Be Heroes probably would have been my favorite film of the year. But this 24-year-old man sitting here today will probably tell you that once is enough. I'm glad I saw this film. 
I just don't think I need to see it again. But what do you guys think? Have you seen We Can Be Heroes? Are you looking forward to it? Do you enjoy it? Do you not? What is your favorite superpower Robert Rodriguez introduced in this one? I would love to discuss all those thoughts down there in the comments with all of you. If you guys are enjoying this content, and if you guys want to continue discussing cinema and all things entertainment with me, well, you know where I'll be. So please consider hitting that subscribe button down below as hard as you possibly can. It is free. It really does help out the channel. And you will also be the first ones to know anytime. I upload a new video over here. If you enjoyed this video also, please be sure to leave a thumbs up if you haven't already on your way out. I'd really appreciate that. As always, look out for more exciting content hitting this channel very, very soon. You guys are awesome. With all that being said, back talk, commence.